I will let Virgin make uh, its own announcements. Uh, but, uh, you know, what I would say on behalf of the Australian government is that we want to continue to see uh, two airlines in Australia as, uh, you know, clear public interest uh, to have competition in the aviation sector. And we will continue to engage uh, with whatever process follows from here. What is the government willing to do for Virgin? Well, the government has provided substantial support to the economy and to businesses around Australia, but on an economy-wide or sector-wide basis, including uh, providing substantial support to the aviation sector, whether that is uh, providing uh, fee relief or, or indeed uh, financially supporting domestic and uh, international uh, routes uh, through this period with, you know, with, with financial support. I mean, we, we've provided substantial support. And, you know, of course, Virgin has got access to our JobKeeper uh, program, which uh, uh, you know, on the same basis as every other business around Australia that has uh, experienced a substantial drop uh, in, in revenue. So, I mean, they, these are all supports uh, that continue to be available and, and we'll continue to engage uh, with, uh, you know, whatever process follows from here. The situation has certainly become more serious for Virgin over the last 24 hours. Shareholders are voting to put it into voluntary administration. Is the government's or are the government's principles the same as they were last week, which is you are still reluctant to take any kind of equity stake in Virgin? Well, you know, we want to see a private sector market-led solution to this. I mean, Virgin has uh, substantial foreign shareholders. Uh, Singapore Airlines and Eddie had both hold 20 percent. Uh, 40 percent uh, is held by two uh, substantial Chinese investors. And, and of course, then there is uh, Richard Branson uh, through his group who owns about 10 percent of Virgin. Now, the first responsibility to bail out a company always rests with its owners, its shareholders. And you know, if, if the shareholders make the decision that they're not prepared to, to do that, then uh, administration offers an opportunity to test the market to say, uh, whether there are any other buyers or uh, potential uh, new shareholders uh, out there that are uh, interested in being part of a restructure and refocusing of the business on um, you know, its performing parts so that it can be a successful and viable uh, business in the future. I mean, the government uh, getting uh, in the way of this uh, would actually make it harder uh, to have a genuinely viable uh, and um, uh, strong and sustainable airline on the other side, and, and that is what we want to see happen. Given the circumstances and what we've seen in terms of taxpayer funds spent in the last couple of weeks due to COVID-19, wouldn't uh, $1.4 billion be a pretty cheap way to save 16,000 jobs? Mm. Uh, well, you know, we, we have provided $130 billion to save uh, jobs all around the economy, I mean, including uh, in Virgin. And so, I mean, we, we have taken an economy-wide and sector-wide approach uh, for good, sound policy reasons. Now, when it comes uh, to Virgin again, I mean, you know, it, we, we are not in the business of picking individual uh, winners uh, here. And, and the precedent that would set across the economy uh, would potentially expose us to quite a long line of uh, similar requests from individual businesses all around Australia. Uh, it, it, our, our approach here is, I mean, administration actually does offer now an opportunity to deal with the uh, challenges that Virgin has been dealing with uh, since uh, well before uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and, and, and indeed, I mean, there's now the opportunity to restructure the business, uh, to refocus the business on uh, the performing parts, to recapitalize the business, uh, perhaps for uh, some uh, a, a new buyer to emerge to uh, run the business moving forward. But like the, the key here is uh, that we need to have a, a private sector led, market led uh, initiatives and, and the government will continue to engage with uh, that process as appropriate. And if there is uh, an appropriate uh, opportunity for us to facilitate this, for example, uh, by, making sh by working with the IEEC to ensure that the regulatory settings are appropriately enforced to uh, protect competition uh, in, in the market and the like, well, then, of course, we will do that. Could that be consider a consideration of actually regulating prices? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, in that space. Uh, we're not in that space. But, you know, clearly we would want to know that uh, there uh, is appropriate uh, com competition in the market and that, there, and that competition is appropriately protected uh, mm. through regulatory settings and, and through enforcement of existing regulatory settings. Just back to JobKeeper just very quickly. If, if Virgin is in voluntary administration, do they still have access to the, that funding? 
Yes, I do. Um, so JobKeeper will continue, and, and that is an important message to the employees of Virgin. Us, you know, if you know, if the uh, company announces this. Uh, uh, process this morning. Uh, any company under administration which continues to operate uh, will continue to be eligible to access the JobKeeper payment. So from that point of view, uh, nothing changes. But administration does give the opportunity uh, to assess, uh, you know, what uh, potential ways forward are available, uh, which makes sense and which, you know, uh, of course, help deliver a uh, sustainable uh, and viable and profitable airline on the other side, which is what we all want to see happen. Any thoughts on Malcolm Turnbull this morning? <laughs> um, I wish him very well. If Cormann had not betrayed me in the shocking way he did, he thinks he would still mm -hmm. be Prime Minister, quote unquote. Is that true? Uh, well, look, uh, Ma Malcolm presented uh, his version of history. Uh, it uh, substantially differs from my very clear recollection of events, but I'm just not going to get distracted by this. Uh, we, we are dealing with a serious uh, pandemic and the public health and serious economic implications of that here in Australia. That is what I'm focused on. That's what all of my colleagues are focused on. That's what the Australian people expect us uh, to focus on. So I, I wish Malcolm uh, all the very best, but I'm just not going to get distracted by any of this.